to my channel. Uh, I've got another video with even more guests this time. We've still got Ron, so don't don't worry. I know everyone likes Ron. Um, and we've got two new people, but we'll get to them later because it's all about me. So um, it's my birthday today, which is really fun. And I've decided to spend it doing a video. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, it's going to be the same video as last time, really, because um, it's been helping people, which is fantastic with Imogen. So if you want to know Imogen's story and journey, check it out. Uh, but no, the whole purpose I'm doing this video for is just to show people that you don't have to come from a certain background to go to drama school and just to tell our story. Um, so yeah, I'll start with Ethan. Say whatever you want. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Ethan, and I've come here from Geneva in Switzerland. Fabulous. How old are you? I'm 19 years old. Alright, I'm Beth. Hello, I'm Beth. I'm 20 years old and I've come from Hertfordshire. Lovely. Lovely. Okay, so we're just it's going to be a bit of a longer video because I have to share them. Um, right, so Ethan, talk about your school. You were a bit of a long one with us. Um, so I went to school in Geneva and I went to an international school. So it was sort of surrounded by many different people from all over the world. Yeah, and then I decided to go to theatre school in the UK because of how good the theatre scene is here compared mm -hmm. to Geneva. So do you have like A-levels or how does um, it work? So I did the IB, which mm -hmm. is the International Baccalaureate, and basically you do six subjects, three at a high level and three at a standard level. So at a high level I did theatre, English and history. Sound. And um, Beth? I, went, I just went to a state school for my whole life. Um, it was a pretty good state school, but um, that's it. Just a pretty levels, boring. Um, I did A-levels, I did maths, drama and sociology. Wow, you smart. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, yeah, why, when did you know you wanted to become an actor or, or go to drama school, I guess? We'll start with that. Um, I think for a long time I kind of like tried to put off doing acting because I knew it was such a hard thing to get into. So I looked at so many different things, but there was nothing that was as fun and there was nothing that I enjoyed as much. Mm. So I think it was probably not really until sort of year 11 that I was like, no, I do, I do want to do this. Yeah, I'll do it for a little while. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Ethan? Um, so I've been doing sort of theatre in the school for like a while, but just things like musicals and stuff like that. But I think when I discovered I wanted to do theatre was when I did it at in education, so at the IB level, when I did it um, as an actual class, because I sort of got a wider range of what it was to be an actor. Was that more theory based? Because I know like I didn't I didn't take um, what's it called drama at A level, but it, it tends to be a little bit more theory based. So what was yours like? On the IB, it's sort of. 50% theory, 50% performance, and the performance is marked as a performance as well. So it's sort of you learn both why acting came about, the history of it, and from different practitioners, and then you got a chance to put that on stage. So it was a sort of a mixture of the two. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just focus a little bit on like, so obviously you're all, it's such a different place than us, so you're literally in a different world really, like nothing over here is similar in a sense. Like, how did your parents feel about it? When did you tell your parents, like, I want to go to drama school in the UK? What were they like? Well, <laughs> my parents have been very supportive about going, going to theatre school. So they sort of realised that I like theatre from early on. And I never really knew what I wanted to do because I was thinking maybe a lawyer, maybe stuff like that. But then I decided on acting and I told my parents and they took it very well. Mm. They were very supportive. So they were basically like, go ahead, go for it. But if you're going to go for theatre... You have to go 100%. Yeah. You can't half-heart it because of how difficult it is. Definitely. And when did you when did you start acting? Um, seriously, about three years ago when I first like got a main in a show, as mm -hmm. it were. And then from then on, I was doing things in and out of school. Nice. That's really good. Um, yeah, how did your parents react? Um, I only really ever mentioned it to my mum and she was supportive. I don't think she was like a massive fan of the fact that I wanted to do drama, um, but I think my dad wasn't chuffed because I think in his mind, he, all he thought was that I wanted to be famous and I wanted to go to Hollywood and, and be a, like a celebrity. Like he, that's what he thought yeah. I wanted. He didn't think I just wanted to just perform for a living. Um, 
so he was skeptical I think and I think he he wanted he's I he's a very maths yeah. background very logical person and that's what he wanted me to be um so he wasn't too chuffed he's come around now I think yeah <laughs> but at first he wasn't a fan definitely so when we're going to talk about schools so you're both in very different positions this is your second year yes and this is your third year same as me mm -hmm. so we'll start with you um what did you do in your first year how did you find it and why is it different now um my first year I don't know what I was doing but it was <laughs> not so it was not good I think I I applied to six schools in my first year um and I got waitlisted for the foundation at East uh, and that was it, that was all I got. Yeah. By the way, we are in the foundation, just in case anyone's yeah. wondering. At <laughs> uh, Lowndes, because there's one at Lowndes, there's one at South End. Yeah. Um, yeah, how did you feel in your first year? Unprepared? Yeah, what was going through your head? Well, I don't think I felt unprepared. I, don't, I didn't know what I was doing and I was unprepared, but I don't think I felt unprepared. Um, but I look back and it just wasn't good. Like I wasn't confident. I didn't have much help or support with my audition models or anything like that from the school that I was at. Um, and I'm really not surprised I didn't get in anywhere to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, and then second year, I only applied for a few schools and then I got the foundation at East. Perfect, and how's this year going for you? This year, um, I keep, I've got quite a few foundation offers. Um, that I'm probably not going to take until I've, I've at least finished the East Foundation because it feels feels unnecessary at this point. Yeah. Um, but no BA offers or anything yet, so I'm still waiting to hear back from East though. Yeah, so. still hopeful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll just go over to you. Um, so last year was my first year auditioning and I went into it completely blind because nobody at my school mm -hmm. knew anything about theatre schools at all, let alone theatre schools in the UK. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I went and at it completely blind and I sort of did a shotgun effect of I looked up the best theatre schools in the UK, I sort of applied to the best theatre schools as like a few and then I got into East and only East into their foundation course which I'm on now. And so I think I've learned at East so much more about what they want and what you should do because last year I had no idea. And then this year going into it, I felt more confident yeah. because of all the help I'd gotten at the school. And this year it's going, I, I'm happy with how it's going yeah. this year. So just to let you guys know, at East 15, at Lowndes you've got the BA acting course, which is what they're kind of well known for in a sense. Um, it's usually what most people audition for, but they also have an amazing course called the the Contemporary Theatre Course, which is just classed as CT, that's what we say. So Ethan decided to go for CT, which is fab. Um, they take a limited number of people, so if you do want to... Yeah, talk us, why did you choose CT over BA? <clears throat> so BA acting is purely acting, and it's a very, you know, you, you go in, you train to be an actor, and then you go off into the world and you act in things. While CT also involves creating theatre, and what the course does it, is it allows you to not only create theatre but show it at the end in showcases mm. and things like that. And a lot of the time CT graduates create their own theatre company and they go on to create their own theatre and performs it at the fringe and some of them have been really successful. And I thought that's much more where I want to go, mm -hmm. both the acting and the creating side. Definitely. Um, and why didn't you choose CT then? Why did you choose acting? Um... I do, I really like the CT course mm. and I think it's great and I actually, I did, I did um, almost put it on my audition form but if you want the CT, you ha it has to be the only one that you yeah. missed because they... Yeah, that's a mm. tip. If you're thinking of CT, only apply to CT. You yeah. need yes. to know whether you want to do it, honestly. Um, but I think what I want is just, is just the acting training. Yeah. That is... It's just what I'm looking for, really. Nice. Um, and the CT course is amazing, and it's very hard to get onto. Yeah. Um, and I think if I could apply to both and have an equal chance, I would have, because I would actually I would enjoy the CT course. I really would. But I think the BA is more what I was looking for in a course. Yeah. It's just it's hard though, because like a lot of people think, oh, BA acting, BA acting is the only good course, and that's not the only good course, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends what you want to do. Um, at South End, you have the BA acting and stage combat course, which has a little bit less acting on, um, 
but it's honestly a good course if you're thinking of going into, into the stage combat world look at it it's a very good course but like with the ct um they you actually if you got onto the ct you'd be working very closely with the ba axon um that's what our teachers have told us so it's not any different training um in a sense like you're still getting the the same teachers and, and the same facilities that you would if you were on the ba accent so just have a look if you're thinking of if you're playing an instrument or you just like writing or creative mm -hmm. things so seriously have a look at the ct um let's go on about it i want to talk about funding because you had a little bit of a trouble i mean you're not a uk citizen so tell us about that it's a it's a weird sort of at the moment, I, I, I don't know the specific details, but with Brexit, yeah. it's now harder to get funding as an international student. And as a student like me, who has a British passport and who both of my parents are British, the fact that I've not lived in the UK for three years then affects how I can apply for funding. So it's sort of a weird, complicated situation that you should definitely look into before applying for, for theatre schools. But most of the time, it's quite simple. To get student loans and to get proper funding yeah definitely it's uh like if you're an international student watching this video um a few schools that don't actually take international students oxford school of drama i know bristol Albert theatre school and there's probably a few out there um and it is just down to money reasons but yeah if you it is hard not being yeah it's not it's hard being part of the yeah. It is. However, East 15 offer an international course yeah. if there are any international students applying, which part of the course is to allow you to understand British culture as mm -hmm. well as British theatre. So that's a very good course to apply to if you're coming from overseas. Yeah, and if you technically are coming from overseas, but you're British, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, I'm, I'm in that weird sort of boat where I've I've lived outside of Britain for so long, but I'm more British than anything else, so I did not apply to the <laughs> yeah. International Theatre course. Yeah, it'd just be a bit weird, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me have a look. Okay, right, so, self-taping this year. Oof, that's been a different one. Um, how has it gone, Beth? Um, I don't know, I've, I've never done any kind of screen or camera work before, so I was kind of a bit blind, and luckily we had some sort of support from the school, uh, mm. telling you some kind of tips and tricks and things like that uh, so I wasn't I guess I wasn't completely blind mm. but it was definitely something I've never done before it's something I'm quite glad I have now done because it's something I'll need yeah. again probably um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as auditioning in person I think I over filmed some of my monologues and was a little bit too self-critical possibly um, but I guess there's pros and cons, isn't there? Definitely, yeah. Would you give any advice to someone who is watching this video and is just hating the idea of self-taping? Um, yeah, don't don't overfilm because I did overfilm and I filmed like several in a row and then when it came to having to watch them back, I'd be watching a bunch at once and I wouldn't be able to really pick out what was good and bad. Yeah, so I just, did that, yeah. Yeah, I would say just film a few, look at them and then come back to it later, like, just take it slow and steady a little bit at a time. Don't force yourself to film for hours like I did. Uh, what was your setup? Like, I, I set up in my shed. It was the only place I had enough space and then we hung sheets from the ceiling. Um, and I had, I had a small tripod on top of a cabinet. That was my setup. Sound. What about you, Ethan? Um, I found... I think, once again, I, I feel the same as you. I feel as if I overfilmed quite a lot of my monologues because it's so easy to watch yourself back and think, oh, that wasn't very good because mm -hmm. we all strive for perfection in ourselves. So for, for me, I did the same thing. I definitely overthought and overfilmed. And it got worse progressively over time until eventually I just thought I'm going to set the camera up, film myself a few times, like maybe once or twice, and then have those ready and send those off. Yeah, and what was your setup? Um, my setup was was very DIY. What <laughs> I did was I, I was in my bedroom and I had a purple background wall, and I taped, I salad taped my phone to the door. No. So yeah, so <laughs> I clicked record and then I salad taped my phone to the door, and had to obviously cut out that beginning part as hey, I walked back. Hey, you've had recalls. That's just showing you guys that you don't need a perfect setup. Like, I, I think I said in the last video, I've got a tripod right now and I've got a ring light that literally costs 13 quid and it does the job. 
you've seen the different what the views and yeah, yeah you don't need a lot of stuff to produce a good video you don't you just yeah. need <laughs> your phone and a bit of sellotape <laughs> clearly yeah and a door <laughs> um right okay so what is your top schools has it changed so like in your first year what was your top school or um in my i think my top school is lambda and it's always been lambda why it's just something about the vibe i think it's so pretty I, I just, I mean that's not the main reason, yeah. um, <laughs> I, like, I really like the course, their alumni is incredible and uh, what I've been, to, I've auditioned in person there and it just feels like the right place, I don't know, there's something about when you go to drama school you can tell kind of you where you'd like, you fit in. I've never had that experience because like, last year, if you've watched any of my videos guys, um, yeah. if you're a true fan, <laughs> uh, but no like last year I auditioned for quite a lot of MT schools and um, and I did a few online, sadly, and the ones I did online were actually like the ones that I really wanted to go and see, which was including East 15. Um, so how, I've never had the experience of walking in really to a school and just going, yes. How do you know? Like, yeah, Beth? Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just felt... Just felt right. Right, right. I don't, I don't know if it felt right, but it felt like... It felt like intimidating in a good way. Like it felt yeah. like a this is something to strive for kind of place. Yeah. And then other top schools. I think in the first year GSA was one of my top schools, but that was more based on other people's opinions. I hadn't actually done enough research. Now it's still an incredible school, but it's not it's not one of my top schools anymore. Um, but Bristol Old Vic, which I hadn't actually even heard of in my first year, is now one of my top schools. Um, East is one of my top schools. And yeah, I think they're probably my three top. Nice. What about you, Ethan? Um, my probably top top school is the Royal Welsh, and it's for the same reason. It's such a pretty school. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It's got such a lovely campus, and its yeah. positioning is so perfect. And quite a lot of my family come from Wales, so it sort of feels closer to home. But but what I want to say is is East. Last year when I auditioned for East, I didn't know anything about it. And I came in sort of thinking, what happens, happens at East. And then I got the foundation place and it has rose to be in my, easily my second top school after Wales. And so it's just, you should never sort of judge a school before you've, yeah. you've tried it or thought about it. Because yeah. I went into East knowing nothing, thinking it's okay if I don't get in, it's okay if I do. Yeah. And I've grown to love it with all my heart. So it's very much like you can fall in love with a theatre school. Definitely, yeah. Back to what you were saying about um, walking into a school. I mm. think what one of the biggest ones I had was actually when I went to East. Like it just it felt so much like somewhere that would really push me. Yeah. And, I, and it almost it made me feel a bit like scared to go there, but like in a way that made me feel like I should. Yeah. So that that just came to my head. That was how it really felt at East, and it's stayed true to that. So. Right. We'll just talk about East Fifteen a little bit. Sorry to rush you guys, but it's just I don't want the video to be too long. So, um, she lives with me um, in a house of five. Um, Imogen was the other girl, and you will see the other few girls later on in the videos, um, in the next few months, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, obviously it's great living with you, and we live five minutes away from campus, but he lives with no East 15 so Foundation students. So how's that? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm living in a house with, with three first-year BAs, one second-year BA, and a master director. And so it's a very different dynamic because I, I get to hear about what's happening in all the different courses. I've really enjoyed it actually. I've, yeah. It's been really nice because I've sort of heard about what what happens on the BA course and I've sort of been able to be like, oh, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. So I've quite enjoyed it. I live a little bit further away from campus. It takes me um, 15, 20 minutes to walk here. But Is that to the main campus? That's to the main campus, main campus yeah. yeah. But I really like it because it's a little more quiet and it's a little more out the way. And also a nice walk in the morning wakes you up and sort of gets you ready for a Definitely. long day acting. Yeah. Um, quickly, just summing up, what, what have you learned from East 15 so far? Uh, I think I've learned to believe in myself more than I did. I've also learned that it's not, people aren't trying to compete with you all the yeah. time. Um, I think that's helped living with these girls that I live with where we're all so supportive of each other um, and I've learned to tr just trust myself and know that I'm, I'm good enough and if I don't get in it's just not my year. Exactly, what about you Ethan? Um, 
I've learned so much. I think I've learned to really throw myself at something. Yeah. I've learned not to hold back, not to get inside of my own head. Fuck it, switch. <laughs> <laughs> and just really, really go at it full, full steam ahead. That's what I've learned. Throw myself at it and be confident that I will be good enough to, to do well in whatever it is that we do. All right, and then just about a gap year, because um, I think it's always good to give people who are watching this video, because um, rejections are hard. Um, like me and Beth are both in our third year, you're in your second year. It takes people many years to get in. Everyone's journey is different. Do not compare yourself to us. But just to give a little bit of, yeah, like, Ethan, what would you do if you had to have another year out? Um, if, I, if I took a year out, obviously, it's, it's a weird sort of COVID year, but I'd probably go back to France and then sort of explore France a little bit more mm. and then sort of maybe travel France and then travel around the UK and see if I can get jobs or volunteer jobs in theatres and things like that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Beth? Um, I want to stick with doing something creative because I think in my last gap year I did the opposite of that. I went to Tanzania on a voluntary trip. Um, so I, yeah, I'd want to do something creative. I'd probably practice writing, whether I'd do anything with that or not. Yeah. It would just be something I'd want to improve. Um, I, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't have any set plans or any yeah. ideas. But there's so much out there. Exactly. There is. Keep hopeful. Um, at the end of the day, if you don't get into drama school, it's not the end of the world, guys. It seriously is not. Your life does not depend on getting into a drama school or not, whether that's RADA or E15. You know, it does not matter. Um, do something that makes you happy. And E15, uh, E15, just acting might just not be for you, and that's fine, but you've got to give it a go. And don't don't stop until you have to give it a go. Unless, you know, when you're 40 years old, you'll be thinking, sitting at a desk job, going, I wish I'd done that. Um, but yeah, just don't be afraid to actually try it. Um, and yeah, so would you guys recommend the cert course at East 15? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it really shows you what you want as well as like builds you yeah. up as an actor. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Um, if you, I also think there's no shame in just, just applying for a foundation either. If you feel exactly. like you need, uh -huh. you're not ready enough or anything like that, um, I really would recommend it. And again, just to clarify, because everyone always forgets this, you can get funding for this course because it's a cert <laughs> course. You got Italia Conte, East 15, and now Arts Ed. Please look at those three courses if you cannot afford a normal GSA foundation course or LIPA foundation course. Look at the ones you can afford, okay? They're all amazing. A foundation course. Go to somewhere. <laughs> go to a foundation <laughs> course you would like to go on to the BA. Don't just go to a foundation course just for the fox, just for, you know, no reason. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you've got any questions, leave it below. Um, and yeah, have fun. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, that's fine. And then I'll... Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>